Hi, my name is Michael with Iconicist. Today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating 360 product photography. Uh, in today's setup, we'll be working with a manual photography turntable. As we can see here, it's just a basic turntable with a ball bearing on the bottom, white piece of acrylic, and there is notches around the outside of the turntable that just kind of communicate, uh, you know, even intervals. There's one notch every five degrees for a total of 72 degrees around the circumference of the turntable. Uh, the other thing that you're going to notice, this is actually a protective film on top of the turntable itself. Uh, typically would remove this to do our photography, but uh, we'll also be communicating our AI background removal tool. Um, so leaving this on will just be able to communicate how powerful that uh, background removal tool is. Uh, we have the software Shutterstream 360 installed on our computer. That's compatible with both Windows and Mac, and the application is designed to automate and streamline 360 product photography while making it easy for users of any skill level to create high quality results. You're going to see we have a camera connected via USB to our computer. This is the USB cord, and that's again going to allow us to uh, kind of hands-free photography. We will not be controlling the camera by, you know, touching the physical dials. We'll be doing that through mouse clicks. Uh, the software is compatible with a long list of cameras. In addition to Canon, we support a lot of Sony cameras, Nikon cameras, iPhones, and Android cameras too. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's turn our attention over to the software. This will be kind of a live kind of walkthrough of the features and functionality and the steps taken to create our 360 product photography. First thing what I'm going to do is enable live view. These are all our image capture tools on the left hand side. And that live view, let me just put my hand in front of the camera, is a real-time preview of what our camera sees. So we will want to go ahead and position our subject in the center of the turntable. So I will just look for the center hole in the turntable and position the object accordingly. And we can see that looks pretty good there as far as uh, positioning. We will do a couple other steps uh, just to ensure that... Uh, we have positioned it correctly. Uh, one thing you're probably going to notice is it looks a little bit blurry. Uh, kind of our natural next step will be, after placing the object, we'll be adjusting our camera settings to optimize exposure and also setting a focal point. So I will click the control camera icon and that's going to pop up this window that you see here, Canon camera settings. So first and foremost, uh, obviously it's blurry, but it's a little bit dark or underexposed. Uh, let me just make a couple changes to my shutter speed to adjust for correct exposure. Uh, I've just changed my shutter speed down to 0.4 seconds, and that looks a little overexposed. So let me take it up to, let's go a quarter of a second here, and that looks pretty good. I don't know if you noticed, but let me make a drastic change inside the software here. Um, when you make a change, if you watch the live view window, that is going to uh, change in real time. Uh, we're simulating the exposure uh, so that obviously if we captured an image it would look as it did here so um, our camera settings look good the nice thing about that is we can also save these inside the software as a camera settings profile so that these correct settings will live within the software for perpetuity unless it's removed at any point um, the next thing that we're going to see here is uh, obviously it looks blurry if you look at this box right here, I'm just going to right click over top of my subject here and that's going to move that box. And what that is, is the one to one viewfinder. So I'm going to click live view zoom, click up close, and that's going to allow me to adjust my focal point. So you're starting to see things come back into focus here. And pardon me, I might have went too far. So we're just going to set our focal point by clicking the near and far arrows. The single arrow will move a micro adjustment, uh, the two arrows a medium adjustment, and the three arrows a large adjustment. So everything looks pretty good there. And we will go ahead and say that is correct for our camera settings. So we are done with that step. Let me just revert my live view back to fit. Um, now our next step is going to be, did we position the object in the center of the turntable? So let's go ahead and move and pre-rotate. As you can see, my hand in the bottom of the screen here. I'm just trying to ensure that as I rotate my object that it is spinning on axis. We don't want to go ahead and shoot this 360 product photography and then decide, oh, it wasn't centered. We have to go and reshoot it. So it looked pretty good for my view. The other thing that we're going to do here is pre-crop our subject. So we're going to say, I don't want to shoot everything that's in the frame here. 
I'll only want to shoot a subset of that frame. So I'm going to define this rectangle that I just defined. That's going to be my crop so that if I hit snap, it only captures what's inside this kind of boundary area. Cool thing about crop as well is you can define crop as a perfect square or a custom ratio. So maybe on your website you need all your images at 1200 by 1200 pixels. You can say always cropped a perfect square and then during the output step resize everything to 1200 by 1200 pixels. Um, the other thing that we want to do while in crop is obviously rotate our object. Uh, we wouldn't want to crop and then decide and then only to find out during capture that our object fell outside our cropped area. So we're just going to rotate and make sure that the arms on Buzz don't fall outside this area. And yes, we could adjust the crop and make it a bit tighter, but we're going to live with that for now. So now our last step will be, let me just close my camera settings. Our last step is going to be our Shoot 360 button. Now this is going to enter us into the uh, image capture step. So I've selected a manual turntable, what we're working with. I'm going to define how many frames I want to shoot. Um, on our turntable, there's 72 notches around the outside. Um, I've put a marker on every third mark, uh, which would mean that'll be a total of 24 frames. So I'm going to select 24 frames. I will choose my image capture mode automatic, and I'm going to put a delay. So it's going to be turn, stop, and then wait X number of seconds, and then capture. That will give me time to go and move the turntable from position 1 to position 2 to position 3. So we're going to use just two seconds. That will be more than enough time. Now my last step is going to be, I'm just going to put a guide marker, which I can use to correctly position the turntable. All right. Now that we've completed that, let's go ahead and get started with our capture. I will hit the start button. That's going to count down from two and then capture. Now what I'm going to do is move my camera or object to the second position. And every two seconds, we're getting a capture. And as we can see, the nice thing about this is as the images are being captured, they're being uploaded into the software. So we can actually see the result in real time and uh, in review. Okay, so we've just completed our capture. That whole entire process took, uh, well, it would be two seconds times 24 frames, 48 seconds. So it is very fast. Nice thing about it, too, it's automated capture, so we're just sitting here manually adjusting the turntable. I should mention we do have fully controlled turntables as well, in which you hit a mouse click button, and you can walk away from your computer, and it will sync the camera snap with the turntable movement in a turn-stop snap automated workflow. So, uh, getting back to this, we're going to close our Shoot 360 button here. We can start taking a look at all our frames here. We're going to see there's a total of 24. What I want to do is select all thumbnails. Uh, as kind of mentioned in the intro, I'm going to discuss some of our editing tools. So I will select those 24 images, hit the edit button. Now inside of Shutterstream 360 software, there is a very good image editing suite with all sorts of tools for image enhancement, color correction, uh, background removal, uh, kind of you name it, we've got it within the software. Uh, the software is going to be kind of a complete turnkey one-stop shop for creating your 360 product photography you won't really require any other third-party softwares whatsoever so um first and foremost uh you know what would maybe do is let's just maybe we'll add some kind of sharpness to our images here and maybe we'll just make a slight levels adjustment we're just going to add a little tad bit of contrast and just adjust the whites just a tad and we're going to say that looks pretty good there the nice thing about when i make a change to a single or or to a single image is I can hit apply and as long as all images are selected it will apply in a batch process. Now the other tool that I'd mentioned was the AI background removal tool. Uh, this is our latest feature. Let me just click on this here. And what that's going to do is try to understand using artificial intelligence what's the product, what's the background, and automatically removed it. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Again, all images are selected. I will just hit the apply button. Okay, so we've just completed the AI background removal. And as we can see, it's gone through. If we look at the bottom queue and I can start clicking through images that everything is being cut onto a transparent background. So looking good here. Uh, now probably what we'll wanna do for our last step will be to 
Well, there's going to be two different options here. Obviously, one is going to be create the 360 product view, um, which I will discuss in a second. But the other one is going to be obviously output your individual frames. Uh, I would say the majority of customers will probably want access to their individual frames in addition to creating a 360 product view. So what we will do here is select all our thumbnails again. We can use our dynamic or batch saving tool. Uh, I'll just use the batch saving tool for the purpose of kind of a quick explainer. Uh, we will rename our file. The nice thing about that is it's going to batch rename everything for us. So I'm going to use buzz dash and it's going to sequentially name these 0, 1 through 24. Uh, we could add custom kind of suffixes if required. Um, we won't do that though. Um, we're also going to choose, maybe we want JPEG images or WebP for our you know website. Um, we'll just use JPEG. You can also choose PNG TIFF or RAW format too if your camera's shooting RAW. Um, PNG and TIFF will retain the transparent properties. If using JPEG, what it's going to do is replace the background color. So we can actually choose to replace transparent area with a specific color. Uh, we're just going to use a gray color here. I will hit OK and we will hit apply and it's going to save to whatever path we've, uh, we've specified. Alright, so we've just completed our batch saving process. Now let's go back into the Shutterstream 360 software and create a 360 view. Alright, so let's use our 360 creator tool to compose the individual image set into a 360 view. As you can see, it gives us an option to resize. We will not. And let's just maximize this window to get a better view. You can see the gray background that we had selected. Uh, inside of here, uh, we do have a tutorial that will go over everything. Um, but uh, just to kind of quickly communicate here, uh, what you can do is fully customize the output size, the dire spin direction, spin duration, uh, the buttons, the button color, um, kind of anything that you want to fully customize this 360 view, you will have the option. So um, all we would do now is just give it a name for the 360 view file, give it an output location, and then go ahead and hit create. And then we have our 360 view that's ready to go for our website. Um, the software, again, is called Shutterstream 360 Product Photography Software. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. Thank you.